and a huge layback snap. How buzzing is Sebastian Zietz right now? And Sebastian Zietz comes out of nowhere and wins Margaret River. Sebastian's just uh, kind of freed up and all of a sudden results are coming his way. Hawaii is, you know, it's home. When I was four months old, my family moved to Kauai. They're kind of hippies, I guess you could say, my parents. I'm one of nine kids. For a little while, we didn't have a house. We were kind of homeless, but we didn't think of it like that. We were just camping. <laughs> we were poor. <laughs> Material things didn't really matter because once you got something that you really liked, some brother or sister would break it like three days later. So you never really got attached to anything. Surfed for entertainment. Hung out outside all the time and played games and just surfed our brains out. I remember seeing him surf when he was just a little kid and he was just talented already. He wanted it already and then he did, they just disappeared. Right around when I was turning 10, my uncle got ran over by a Mack truck at a red light and then my grandfather died of a heart attack like three days later and they lived in Maine. We actually flew to California, bought a Winnebago and drove it to Maine. It was gnarly. There's six, six kids and my parents all living in a 20-foot Winnebago. There's four of us sleeping in one bed, but my uncle was like a millionaire, so we were expecting to get a bit of inheritance and then that would help us move back. Driving up into the snow for the first time. Being from Hawaii, we all like ran out in the snow like barefoot. We, none of us even owned shoes. We ended up living in the Winnebago for like two years because when we finally did get to Maine, you know, there's this whole legal battle. We ended up not getting our inheritance and then we just had no money to get back home. I had forgotten about surfing kind of and was a skier. I was really into skiing, you know. Maybe my dad was kind of loving it more than my mom. He used to own a sailboat back in the day, so he was like, oh, let's get a sailboat, sail down the coast. We were all like, no, let's go home, like Kauai, like, we haven't forgotten our like paradise. We ended up getting the boat. Me, my brother, and my dad like fixed it up. We sanded the whole thing. Like me and my brother's fingers were like, we had no fingerprints because we were just like hands were raw from sanding all day. And the first day we're taking off. We're like turning around in the channel and we're saying bye to all my aunts and uncles are there. So we're like bye and Boom, we just run aground first thing. We're like turning around in the channel. All my aunts and uncles are just watching, just kind of laughing. We lived like five different spots for around six months at a time. We made it down to Key West, Florida, and my parents really liked it there. My mom was a waitress for whole life, and then she ended up selling art and was killing it, so we made enough money to finally move back home. At 24, my brother took me in, I was 14, just so that I could have a chance at being a surfer. The family decided to move back to the East Coast and I was like, you gotta leave him, just let him stay with me and surf. At 16, I moved out and I moved in with Barca. He lived in the laundry room, which was like a five by 10 box that you could just put a bed in. It. That was his nest for a couple years, and that's where we kind of started harnessing his ability as a, as a surfer. And I just always tried to give him a shot, you know? I seen possible greatness in the kid, you know? And well, there's a lot of guys that had a lot to do with me qualifying, and. Barca and Fuller and my brother are probably the biggest influences when it came down to that year and I had a chance to qualify and, and they were just like, do it already, like we're sick of it, like you can do it. When he won the Triple Crown as the full payoff for me, always helping him, it was like, good job. 
the CT. Definitely it beats down on you, you know, year after year, not requalifying and feel like your surfing's getting better, but then like not really making it. This year I kind of fell off tour, it was super eggy, I was just super defeated with myself and coming to the QS though, fired up to like do good and did horrible in the first two events. It was like, oh my God, here we go, the QS, bogging. Got the call up for Gold Coast and was so stoked. to West Oz, like, I didn't surf Margaret's main break once. This is amazing stuff for Sebastian Zietz. Margaret, so just, gosh, she was just surfing so good. I think that judges really love the fact that Seabass put a ton of pressure on that grab rail car. I was definitely shocked to hear I was second in the world. That definitely like blew me away. Like, whoa, that's super sick. I was almost ready to just hang it up. <laughs> you know, he's a world title contender, but I don't think he, he puts any pressure on that. You don't want to spoil that opportunity. I'm going to be successful no matter what, you know, starting a gym and having a house and keep it humble and come home and get schooled my, by my brother and <laughs> just still being thankful to be in the events and realizing that I'm a injury wild card and kind of work for me just in my mental state.